Hello friends, today we are going to discuss in this session construction of embankment for roads as given in Ministry of Road Transport and Highway Specifications of 2013 and also as given in Ministry of Rural Development Specifications for Rural Roads 2014. These specifications cover the construction of embankments including subgrade, other shoulders and other backfill materials and these specifications are covered under section 300 of MORTH specifications book and MORD specifications for rural roads. The material which is used in embankment or shoulder can be either soil, murum, gravel, fly ash, pond ash, reclaimed materials from pavements or it may be combination of all these. But the material should be free from logs, stumps, roots, rubbish or any other material likely to affect the stability of the embankment. Some materials are not considered suitable for making embankment and these are the materials from swamps, marshes and bogs, any soil that is classified as OL, OI, OH or peat as per IS 1498, materials susceptible to spontaneous combustion, materials in frozen conditions, or clay having liquid limit of more than 50 and plasticity index of more than 25 or materials with salts resulting in leaching in the embankment such as salt infested soils with pH value more than 8.5 or expansive clay with free swelling index of more than 50 when tested as per IS 2720 part 40. When an expensive clay having FSI less than 50 is used as a fill material, then top 500 mm portion of the embankment just below the subgrade shall be non-expensive in nature. The size of coarse materials should not exceed generally 75 mm when placed in embankment and 50 mm when it is placed in subgrade. However, the engineer in charge may permit the use of material coarser than these sizes also if he is satisfied that the material can be compacted to desired density without any difficulty. Normally, only the material satisfying the density requirement as given here shall be used in embankment or in subgrade. So when you are constructing an embankment up to 3 meter height and which is not subjected to extensive flooding, the Minimum laboratory die density should be according to this table. That is, for highways, it should be more than 15.2 kiloton per meter cube, and for rural roads, it can be 14.4 kiloton per meter cube or higher. For embankment more than 3 meter in height, subject to long period of inundation or flooding, this density for highway should be more than or equal to 16 kiloton per meter cube, and for rural roads, it should be more than 15.2 kiloton per meter cube and for subgrade and the shoulders these are the density values. So the material to be used in either embankment or in subgrade should be such that when you are compacting it in the laboratory the maximum dry density should be within this range. However, these density values are not applicable for lightweight materials like fly ash, cinder or pond ash because you cannot achieve these density for such a light materials. The materials to be used in subgrade should be non-expansive and should satisfy the requirement of CBR also as given in IS 37. The general requirements for materials to be used in embankment that it should be obtained from approved sources with preference given to the acceptable material becoming available from nearby roadway excavation under the same contract. And the attempt should be such that the best available material for the subgrade and the amendment portion just below subgrade is saved. The material is taken from the borrow pit and, and the pits which are dug along the road alignment for taking soil for amendment construction is known as borrow pit. The borrow pit along the road shall be discouraged if permitted by the engineer in charge then it should not be dug continuously and it should be rectangular in shape with one side parallel to the center line of the road and no borrow pit shall be dug within a distance equal to the height of the embankment 
subject to a minimum of 1.5 meter from toe of the final section of the embankment. The ridges of not less than 8 meter width shall be left at the intervals not exceeding 300 meter and a small drain should be cut through the ridges to facilitate the drainage. Depth of barrow pit should be so regulated that their bottom does not cut an imaginary line having a slope of 1 in 4 projection from the edge of the final section of the embankment. And the maximum depth in any case should be limited to 1 to 1.5 meter. The compaction requirement in case of highway, the lap density should be estimated through heavy compaction and relative compaction in the field as percentage of lap MDD that is maximum tide density should not be less than 95 percent. Expensive soils are not permitted in 500 millimeter portion just below the subgrade but in remaining portion of the amendment the in case of expensive soils the density can be up to 90 to 95 percent of lab density. In case of rural roads the density is estimated through light compaction that is IS2720 part 7 and for amendment of any height, this relative compaction should be not less than 97% of the lab maximum dry density. Construction operations, there are few steps in the construction of amendment and the first step is to clear the site and mark the limits of the amendment and these limits shall be built sufficiently wider than the design dimensions. The second is dewatering. If the foundation of the amendment is in the area with the stagnant water and it is feasible to remove it, then it should be removed by some method of dewatering. If the amendment is constructed under water, then only acceptable gallon materials or rock shall be used. And the acceptable materials are well graded gravel, well graded sand, or poorly graded gravel or poorly graded sand. And these materials should be non-plastic having uniformity coefficient not less than 10. The third step is stripping and storing topsoil. And this, is, should, this should not exceed 150 millimeter and should be stored in stock piles of height not exceeding 2 meter for covering embankment slopes. Then after that, compacting ground supporting embankment. If necessary, the original ground shall be leveled to facilitate placement of the first layer of the embankment, scarified, mixed with water and then compacted by rolling to achieve the same density as suggested for the embankment. And then you spread the material in layers and bring the to the appropriate moisture content. The compacted thickness should be limited to 250 millimeter if vibratory roller is used otherwise it should be 200 millimeter. Moisture content to be checked prior to compaction and if the soil is too wet then it should be dried by aeration or exposure to sun and if it is too dry then the required moisture should be added to the soil so that it is compacted easily at maximum dry density. After the layer is spread uniform thickness and the moisture is brought to the appropriate level then next step is the compaction. Compaction is to achieve the desired density and degree of compaction to be measured in each layer. The compaction shall be done with the help of self-propelled single drum vibratory roller or pad foot vibratory roller of 80 to 100 kilonewton or it may be heavy pneumatic tire roller of adequate capacity capable of achieving the required density. And once you have compacted it, then subsequent layer shall be placed after the finished layer has been tested and accepted by the engineer in charge. Field density should be measured by any method. It can be either nuclear gauge method or by sand replacement method. And the density achieved should satisfy the criteria given earlier that is 95 to 97 percent depending upon the construction type. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have understood the procedure of embankment construction or subject construction. You can write your comments in the comment box.